Hello Lighthouse, and welcome to Truth for Troubled Times. Since the pandemic began, you've probably experienced a wide range of emotions such as fear and frustration, hope and heartache. With all that's going on, one emotion that I've struggled with at times has been anxiety. I've experienced it as I've woken up throughout the night instead of sleeping soundly. I felt it when my alarm goes off after that restless night and I immediately feel a pit in my stomach as I start thinking about my day. I felt it as I've lost some weight just because I don't feel as hungry as I normally do. The pressures for making decisions for my family, being self-employed, uncertainty about the future, and being part of the team that's trying to help discern God's will for ministry plans here at church, all in the midst of the most significant pandemic the world has seen in the last hundred years has led to some anxiety. Can you relate? Where has anxiety shown up in your life? Has this year turned into a nightmare because your plans for school or making the varsity team or special events like going to prom seem like they're never going to happen? Are you stressed because you've heard rumors about the next round of layoffs? Or maybe you've already lost your job? Do you have no idea what's going to happen with your wedding day that's just around the corner? Or that big family vacation that you've been planning for a couple years? Has the last month felt like an eternity as your kids have been learning from home? Is a separation from seeing your children or your grandchildren or your parents tearing you apart? Are you constantly wondering if you're going to get sick if you step outside your home? I'd like to share a passage that has really been an encouragement to me throughout the pandemic. Let me read to you from Philippians chapter 4, starting with the second half of verse 5. The Apostle Paul writes, The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. As Paul is wrapping up his letter to the Philippians, he addresses several topics, including their anxiety. The Greek text tells us that these issues must have been intense because anxiety was continually there. They were in the habit of being anxious. It's like that knot, even that pain that you constantly have in your stomach because of your anxiety. Paul commands them to stop being anxious, and this is God's calling in our lives too. God has not called us to live a life of anxiety. Notice what the second half of verse 5 says just before the commandment not to be anxious. The ESV translation says, The Lord is at hand. If you have the NASB or the NIV translation, then your Bible says the Lord is near. In setting the stage to command us not to be anxious, Paul reminds us that God is near to us. He is near because God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. He is near because the Holy Spirit dwells in every believer. He is near to us in the sense that Jesus will return one day, and we should live with that hope and expectation. The Lord is all around us, His Spirit dwells within us, and He will return to earth for us. In light of these truths, we should not be anxious. As I was writing this devotion, I was thinking that in light of these truths, doesn't it seem silly to be anxious? It is silly, but I know there are plenty of times I'm still anxious. How then can we live out God's command not to be anxious? Verse 6 tells us. Notice the huge contrast in this verse. We are not to be anxious about anything, not the big things like finding a job, finding a spouse, or finding opportunities to witness to a family member who does not know Christ. We are not to be anxious about little things, like what we will eat or what we will wear. But, and there's that big contrast, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. The way we fight our anxiety is by coming before God in prayer. Verse 6 gives us three ways we can pray. Prayer refers to intercession, which is praying for others. If you are anxious for someone, the best thing you can do is to pray for them. Supplication is petitioning God or asking God that an urgent need be met, such as physical healing for someone who is sick. Requests refer to naming specific things we need, such as money to pay, an upcoming bill, or God's wisdom in a particular situation. Now, we are not called to pray because God is ignorant of our needs. In Matthew 6, Jesus clearly says that our Heavenly Father knows what we need. 
So why does God want us to pray? Coming before God in prayer shows our dependence on Him and our trust in Him. As I was meditating upon this passage, it struck me that it would take a long time to pray through everything that's on my heart. But then I realized that's not a bad thing. The thought that praying for a long time would be boring or hard shows my spiritual immaturity. I have no doubt I would be less anxious if I actually spent all that time in prayer talking with God, and I know that's what God wants of you too. As one commentator writes, the way to be anxious about nothing is to be prayerful about everything. Verse 7 promises if we pray with thanksgiving, as we are called to in verse 6, then a powerful thing will happen. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which, trans which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Isn't that an amazing promise? The peace of God, which is a reference to the very peace that God himself has, will guard our hearts and minds. This will happen. God is making a promise to us. His very peace, a peace which goes infinitely beyond any human planning or reason, a peace that will accomplish far more than I could ever do on my own and try to get rid of my anxiety, the anxiety of my life, a peace that is far more wonderful than I could imagine will guard our hearts and minds. The term guard here is a military term. God's peace is like a group of soldiers there to protect our hearts from anxiety. The next time you start to feel anxious, you start to feel your heart racing, Stop and pray with thanksgiving. Ask God for his peace and imagine that peace guarding your heart and mind for what makes you anxious as you trust him who is far greater than whatever problem you are facing. God's promises us his peace right here. He will be faithful. As one commentator writes, the opposite of anxiety, indeed its relief, is the peace that only God in answer to prayer bestows upon his people. What are you anxious about right now? Let me encourage you to turn to God in prayer, and let me encourage you to pray for and with others who are fighting anxiety. If your children or spouse are anxious, get in the habit of praying together as a family. Get out of the habit of being anxious. If you have a friend who's struggling with anxiety, reach out to them to pray together by phone or FaceTime or Zoom. Thank God for all the means we have to stay in touch. Let's close in prayer. God, we thank you that you are a God of peace. And God, I pray that you would take our anxiety and cast it away, that we might know your perfect peace as we come before you in prayer with thankful hearts. God, whether it's due to COVID or work or a personal situation or a health struggle or whatever may be causing our anxiety, God, I pray that we can turn to you in prayer, our great and wonderful God. Thank you, God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're looking for a great resource, let me re recommend to you Ed Welch's A Small Book for the Anxious Heart. This is a quick read, but it's filled with biblical truth that will be a great encouragement to you. God bless.